I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright. And I'm here with that super millennial, David Barreto, giving us the millennial perspective. How you doing, David? I'm doing good. How's it going? Very well. Very well. This week, our topic is growth. In today's Health Huddles, we're discussing growing our health. So growth is defined as the act or process or a manner of growing. It is development. Growth is about gradual increase. Now, this is a very important definition to understand. The human being is hardwired for behavior. This behavior is dictated by what is held in mind, and what is held in mind is the programmed identity. This sets your behavior, your routine, and your reality. The challenge we each face as humans is that our brain, mind, and body develop to protect the programmed identity held in mind. And this is accomplished through the comfort zone, which is set so you don't change. It is set so you don't grow. It is set to create resistance to you attempting even slightly to change anything in your daily routine. It's important to understand that. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, for sure. Because if you don't understand that, you can't understand why you want to change something so bad. And it's so hard (laughs) because you're normal. Yeah. <laughs> Would you agree? Yeah, Do you have any sure. comment on that? Yeah, you, you know, understand? we say that all the time. The people who, who want to make a change and that fail always have good intentions behind it. And it's, you know, 9.9 times out of 10, true. They just don't know why they failed. Mm-hmm. Right? So growth in any of the five life categories requires you to become uncomfortable, to let go of the old programs, the old identity, and create a new self-authored identity with a new routine. Growth is all about change, and you must know that change is not a natural function for the human. Growth is developing new skills, programs, and changing your hardwiring and creating a new behavior to support the reality you desire to build. Now, we talked on, or I talked on Setup Sunday about the growth purpose The growth purpose are those individuals who embody the growth purpose seek change. They want change. And I have found over the last few years that almost every one of my clients that holds a growth value that these individuals want change. So you have the growth purpose, but you can have a different purpose. But if you have that growth value, this this means they are driven to climb their mountain And this helps the individual when it comes to the life category of health Mm -hmm. because they're, they, they're, they're moved to create change, right? If you don't have that, you can be stuck in your cage mind for a long time. (laughs) Yeah. So for instance, if the individual holds a vitality purpose or value, this will move them to seek growth and health. But If you fail to understand the biological essence of the human being, how your body functions, how your body operates, you you may spend a lifetime seeking health and failing. Next week, we will be featuring the vitality purpose, and you will see how Oprah Winfrey, a vitality purpose, has continually fallen short of her pursuit of health. So you see, it's just because you have the drive the only way you're going to have the success is to understand the function and operation of the human being, work within that function and operation, and create a new routine, new identity, new reality. Mm-hmm. So you're with me so far? Yes, sir. So how does one grow their health? As with all growth, this begins with awareness. In stress mastery and the go right lifestyle system, that's the stress mastery wellness and health life category program. Our health is measured by the 10 biomarkers of health created by Dr. William Evans. I studied under Dr. Evans in the 1990s, and this is when I began to understand that health has one single factor, recuperation. Mm -hmm. That's your key factor of health. 
the when we look at the number one biomarker of health, it's muscle. So if your biological essence, your body is supporting a mind stuck in worry, anger, grief, guilt, fear, the body will be stuck in the stress network. The body supports the mind. The stress network is held through the human construct. Number one, the alarm system, sympathetic nervous system, red zone is activated. Two, the stress loop connects mind, activated in the mind, to the body, so you feel the activation in the body. Three, the mind identity, the ego holds the conflict and creates conflict distortion. The body identity, the stress network is activated, the body's in fight or flight. And five, the identity, the base identity set in event, judgment, and reaction. This state of stress, this state of the stress network will break down the biomarkers of health. So I'm going to go over these biomarkers and let's discuss this a little bit. When you are stuck in the alarm system in stress, the body will be breaking down its muscle. That's the number one biomarker. As the muscle decreases, number two, strength decreases. Number three, Basal metabolic rate, your energy decreases. And number four, fat increases. Muscle comes down, fat comes up. As these biomarkers break down, number five, aerobic capacity decreases. That's the oxygen in the body. And number six, the blood pressure increases, blood sugar increases, cholesterol increases. Number nine, the bone density increases. And 10, the temperature regulation, the thyroid gets thrown off. The the whole regulatory system gets thrown off. This is because the body is stuck in the stress network and it's not recuperating. And so the wellness network doesn't get turned on. So can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I've I've said this a, a long time before, but we get comfortable and used to these feelings, you know, of I'm just warm blooded. No, your thyroid's probably off. Or, you know, I'm tired all the time. I'm sluggish. I'm this, I'm that. Like, they, they, they hold on to it like a personality trait of that's just who I am. And to an extent, yes, because your body is disconnected. This, this whole network is all over the place. And that's what we got used to. And that was the, the one thing I noticed, the big thing through, you know, my change, losing all that weight and actually becoming healthy, that I don't know how I functioned. I had no idea how I got out of bed and did what I did day to day because it was like, you know, going up a hill with hundred pounds on your back, it's pulling you back and you just make it stronger or think you're stronger that you could get through it. But I was drinking two, three, four energy drinks a day and, you know, the crutches that I was using to get through and that's not how it should be. And you, you made a very point there. So these feelings of tired, being stressed out, being anxious, they become part of the identity. Mm -hmm. Yes. They become part of your reality. And you think that's normal. Mm -hmm. That's just who you are. Well, it is in your identity, but it's not truly who you are. You're creating that reality. And if you don't manage the stress network, you cannot grow health. So why do most people fail to grow health as we age? Right? Well, this is tied to the social essence of the human being. The social essence is tied to the societal program set as a child. As a small child, we are each exposed to the aging process and the health habits and rituals programs of our family, culture, and our environment that we're in. So most of us are programmed with the societal program that we grow old. And with this program, the person growing old is not in the process of growing their health. It's usually the opposite. We have a program of how we're supposed to age held in mind. And the human being is hardwired for behavior. This behavior is dictated by what's held in mind. And what's held in mind is set through that program and identity that sets your reality. And very important, this is held in routine. Now, what this means is most people are programmed how they age. And this affects their aging process and their health. So I was programmed that food is a comfort tool. Exercise is for the young and the rich. I was programmed that by age 60, health was a struggle, pain was inevitable, and growing old sucks. 
that was my programming. Because remember, I was raised in my later years after age eight, nine, ten by my grandparents. So guess who was always over at the house? People that were my grandparents' age. Yeah. So I got that programming that, very simple, Billy, growing old sucks. Well, I'm 62 <laughs> years old. I'm living proof of what is possible and beyond what most people believe is possible. See, it's very important to understand not just what your current habits are, but what are your current belief system and routines, right? So do you believe that you hit a certain age? This is what has to happen. We we saw it. We see it all the time in the medical clinics. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I I think that that goes such a, a long way because even if like, you know, the health programs, as far as, you know, diet and all that stuff wasn't there, you'll hear, um, you know, like my dad used to say about like diabetes and stuff. That was his reality. My dad's type one diabetic. Been like that since I was born. But you, so you got you guys got to make sure because one of you three probably going to get it. That stuck with me. I was like, you know what? No matter what I do, until I see my brother or my sister get it, I could be the one. And I realized it doesn't have to be like that. Or the same thing like with like that. cancer ridden or our genetics suck or we don't process carbs. Like those were things that were stuck into my head. Yes. That. I was like, all right, you know what? Everything that, all the diets that I saw, all the things that I saw that were actually positive and my friends were doing and stuff like that in high school, putting on muscle. I said, hell no, that has rice, that has this. I'm going to get fat. And now, David, completely tell him different. how many grams of carbon. Imagine, just go back a couple years ago. Yeah. How many grams of carbohydrates do you take in a day? So this, now it's, now my, I'm low carbs and still 400. <laughs> so I'm dieting for a contest that are 250 grams. Can you imagine that in the yeah. past, right? You never, never do that, right? So growing your health starts with discovering how your body functions and operates. That's for sure. You want to know what is your stress responder. It's very important that you understand how your body functions and operates. And then next, growing your health is about reversing the 10 health biomarkers. That's growing your health, is reversing those biomarkers. When you create a daily routine that supports the recuperation of the body, you then reverse the biomarkers. And thus, you grow your health. We personally did this with thousands of people 70 years and older. Yes. Thousands. Not a 10, not 20. Thousands. We did it with Javier in Panama. And boy, did we do it in our medical clinics, which we were, we, we worked with Humana and we were a managed care. We had a managed care division. Everybody was in their seventies and we reversed the biomarkers. Mm -hmm. And so what does that mean? Well, if you could create a routine where the body begins to recuperate and you start to repair, number one, the muscle starts to increase. Number two, the strength increases. What happens, you'll notice that your joints don't hurt anymore. You know, it's interesting. Even our, our partner, Patrick, always had bad knees because he thought, well, I'm a former, I'm six foot eight. I'm a former basketball player. I'm always going to have bad knees. I'll never forget what I told him. You need to squat. He looked at me like I was an alien. <laughs> Guess what he did? He squatted. Guess what he doesn't have today? Bad knees. It's a long squat. Yes. And no knee. And you see how he looks, right? Yeah. No knee issue. Muscle comes up, strength comes up. What else comes up? Number three is the basal metabolic rate rises. Your energy rises. Your body is burning more energy. And number four, your fat goes down and you can visibly see in the mirror a different looking body. Mm -hmm. But number five is important because the aerobic capacity increases. And when this happens... Number six, blood pressure drops. Number seven, blood sugar drops. Number eight, cholesterol drops. Number nine, bone density increases. Number 10, temperature regulation, thyroid optimizes. When you do this, you reverse the biomarkers and you are actually growing your health. There's no age limit on this. Mm -hmm. So your thoughts on that, David? Yeah, you know, it, it sounds like all these crazy things that happen, you know, when you finally get to this point and you start reversing it because yeah, people go to the gym they start to see their muscles and stuff like that. You know, I noticed that my hair 
even got better. And that was something that's like me, I never really cared about. But I noticed my hair looked healthier. I looked healthier. Going up the yeah. stairs and tying yeah. my shoes. You you don't being out of shape to the point where tying your shoes is a is a taxing thing. To me, it was normal. I thought everybody dealt with that. No. So I realized that, you know, going on the treadmill in the beginning, stupid hard. I hated it. I could not stand it. Towards the end of the prep, I was on there for like an hour and a half. I'm like, I'm struggling to get my heart rate up. It was that's, such a crazy that's the thing. Issue. I could look at a treadmill and be like, whoo, 100 beats per minute. I didn't even get yeah. on yet. <laughs> yeah. The, as your heart gets stronger, you got to work a little harder because yeah. your body can. Uh-huh. Right? So you see, to put your body into a state of recuperation, to create growth, right? You must manage the stress network as to activate the wellness network. We never shut off stress, people. This is done through the human construct. It's done through, the, we're going to go over the steps to do this, but the key is when you turn on the recuperation system, number one, that is activating the parasympathetic nervous system, green zone. Number two, this activates the vagus nerve. And this connects to three brains, head brain, heart brain, gut brain. Number three, mind identity, true self. You are now in charge of the cage mind. The body identity, the wellness network, and all the hormones are in connection. And the identity base that's set, event, awareness, and you're responding. In this state of recuperation, your body grows healthy. And this is not determined by age. It's determined by the five elements of optimal health. These are the factors that activate the wellness network. And as that body moves into a state of repair, the hormone communication of the wellness network moves the body back into its natural stasis. And this shifts the 10 biomarkers of health. See, this is a very calculated process, people. Anyone can do it. It's not magical David and Bill programs. You're talking to two people that have lost well over 100 pounds, went from obese to bodybuilder. And for me, kept it off for 42 years. It's new for David, but it's just because he's not old yet. He's never going back because you create the new routine. So if we look at what does it take to do this? Number one, sleep. Sleep must be addressed. We're talking about putting the body back into growth, into recuperation and creating stasis sleep. Number one element of optimal sleep. Sleep must be addressed both subjectively and objectively. So just subjectively is the social essence, which sets your current sleep routine. In other words, it's your current habits of sleep, right? Objective is measuring your sleep results, measuring your deep sleep. This is connected to the body and its repair. Measuring your REM sleep, this is connected to the mind and its state. And collectively with time, amount of sleep, you get the HRV and this dictates recuperation. And if you have issues with sleep, you got to go to your doctor. Do you have sleep apnea? Age, at a certain age, our thiamus gland shrinks and the body doesn't make as much melatonin. You're going to need melatonin. If you're not taking it, you're not going to create sleep. And then I would say a big one is the environment. You got to create, you got to change the routine to get your sleep into optimal states. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about this in the past, David. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think sleep becomes the, the overrated thing and then people start to oh, I love my sleep when they get older because now they're not recuperating or recovering as they used to when they're young. So they feel like they love their sleep. You're just tired. You're not functioning the way you should. You wake up tired. You go to sleep tired. That's why you love your sleep. It's not because you love sleep because like now I can stay. Now I say I love my sleep because like I know I'm going to wake up feeling much better. But when I was younger, I didn't need sleep like that. You know, I did two hours, and, and go to school, go to work, whatever the case was, and I was perfectly fine. Now when I see all the memes about like, oh, I'm staying inside, I'm sleeping, I'm this and that, or I'm always tired, it's supposed to be funny, and it's funny because it's relatable, but it's sad because most people are tired because they're yep. thrown off, or their sleep environment's off, or they don't understand how to set up their sleep hygiene properly to get good sleep. And so what happens? 
their body is breaking down. Those biomarkers are breaking down, right? Mm -hmm. So once the sleep is addressed, next is water and hydration. Subjectively, it's measuring how much water you're currently drinking and your routine for drinking water. I'm going to tell you now, one of the great changes in routine is to put water down the very first thing when you wake up. Drink a quart of water. It will change. That one will change your life so fast. You'll be shocked at how you feel. And objectively, you can get a urinalysis test, the color of your urine, using a measurement tool to make sure you see how you're drinking water, right? You know, as we age, and this is very important for people to understand, the thirst mechanism shuts down. Older people, we found they do not get thirsty. You have to put a plan together for them to drink water or they won't drink. I know that with your grandmother, my mother-in-law, she won't drink water unless Linda's putting it in front of her, right? I think even for me, I have to have the bottles there because I don't get thirsty as much as I did when I was younger. So what are your thoughts on water? Yeah, I think uh, starting your day with it is probably one of the best things that I've, I've started doing just because once you start to get to that habit, like once you're hydrated, you're thirsty all the yes. time. So once you skip that opportunity and your body's like, I'm not getting water, you realize it's five o'clock. You haven't drank any water, but it's also the same thing with sleep. I mean, you got to learn to enjoy it. There's so many different things. There's air up bottles that flavor the water. Yeah. There's different flavorings. There's different types of water bottles. You got to find out what works. If you think that going to the gas station, I bought two bottles today and then you accidentally forgot it in the car. Now it's hot. You're going to drink it. No, keep it with you. Keep it on. You make sure it's how you like to drink and you'll drink it. And understanding a functional operation of human being. Every human being wakes up in the red zone. Every human being wakes up dehydrated. If you do that, before you do anything, have your water bottle set up and you drink that water right away, you are activating the green zone. You are activating the wellness network to start your day. You see, that's how powerful it is. So when we have sleep and hydration dialed in, number three comes the mind. And this is good. People, see, the body supports the mind, the program identity, and the social essence is set for you. So when we worry, the recuperation system is shut down. When we worry, the body's ability to repair is shut down and growing our health is impossible. Hear me out. That's the truth. You're, I don't care what else you do. Now, when the mind is in worry, the body supports the mind through activating the human construct alarm system. And this keeps the stress network in the body activated. Thus, breaking down the muscle and destroying the 10 health biomarkers. Now, subjectively, slow down. Do you feel anxious? Do you feel anxious throughout the day? Are there certain times of the day? Do you consistently feel worried? And just be honest. How do you start the day? And how do you close the day? What's your current routine building your reality? Now, objectively, Discover your purpose. I cannot tell you how, how that will change your life. And name the ego. Mm -hmm. You're splitting the eyes. Change your routine. Set and close your day. Use the Green Focus Power Hour in our closing the day routine. Learn to slow down. Use a master to let go technique to consciously deal with worry during the day. You become aware. Journaling. Begin the process to self author your life. This will change your body faster than anything else, right? Because I tell you, if you work on your mind, guess what? Sleep is pretty easy. You'll remember to drink water. Right. You know, it all kind of works that way. But people don't think about that when it comes to our body and the biological essence, because our biological essence is supporting our social essence, what's held in mind. So if you have one of those people that are worried all the time, you're killing yourself. Just mm -hmm. telling you right now. And it doesn't serve you. Worry has never helped you in anything. Ever solved a single conflict yeah. or problem. So all you're doing is aging yourself and creating disease. So that would be the, that's the third element of optimal health is your mind. Do you have any comments on that? Yeah, I think the mind plays into... In 
well, we know, not think, but everything that you do. And we talk about the exercise, the diet, the sleep, the water, all of that. I mean, the mind's going to play a role into it. And I think, like you said, when you find your purpose and you find your reason, you know how people say your, your why has to be bigger than your won't? This is it. Once you once you really connect to it, you start to see why yep. you're doing this, and it's not just for you. And it should it, it is just for you. But the the people you touch and the wake that you leave around, the people who are watching that you're not aware that are watching the lives you change that you don't know you changed, even if it's small, even yep. if it's big, it's always happening. And you got to remember that happens when you don't do it either. So you're setting an example one way or another. Always. But when that purpose is connected, you put that best foot forward to make that change. And it makes it much easier. And the mind, I'm telling you, people, everything that you learn. Now, number four, the fourth element of optimal health is diet. Here we go. Now, subjectively, what is your current routine? Sit down and figure out your patterns of eating. You know, log your foods. Don't change anything. Just log it. So my daughter, your sister, Angie's been logging. And she's logging, right? And then one day she broke her diet, but she logged it. And she was literally shocked. And she called Linda and said, I can't believe how many calories I I consumed, how much I ate. She goes, I used to eat like that all the time. I had no idea. Yeah, that's why I tell people to do that. The first thing, don't don't change your diet. Don't change anything. Track it. Track it. And what it does is it creates awareness for you. And look at your eating patterns while you track it. What time did you eat? When did you eat it? And sit with yourself. What am I craving? Is there a time I crave? What do I crave? What is your history of diet? Remember, we talk about... If you diet, lost weight, and gained it back, you failed. So, but what was the history? Why did you diet? Why were you doing that? What was pushing you? And how do you feel energetically, mentally every day? See, this is how the first step is is looking at, okay, this is where I'm at. This is how I eat. This is what I do. And it can be very revealing. Mm -hmm. And subjectively, it's now telling you, well, that's your subjective reality. Yeah. Angie did not know her subjective reality until she looked, holy crap, because that was a routine, the way she ate. Mm-hmm. And she didn't think it was bad until she saw it. Yeah, you know, that, right? the, the interesting thing with that I think is cool because when people are like, well, I have to be like this for the rest of my life. We just went out not too long ago to, to get lunch, and we stayed out longer than we wanted to. So we ended up getting lunch out. That wasn't our plan. We were still able to track and eat and be on, you know, and still be within it. I think that's where people forget is that you develop this skill to do it as well. But it's the awareness because even we're on the road next week. Yeah. I'll be tracking and eating and packing and doing my stuff because because I I think even if I, let's say I didn't track that meal, I could have guilted myself. We talked about the mind saying, Oh, that was off plan. I probably went way over calories. You know, I could have built all these stores around it, but when you track it, you take that you story know. out of it. It's okay. Yes. I gotta, I gotta tighten it up tomorrow or I didn't do, I'm, I'm still on track today. You know, it allows you alignment, to David. Yes. That's the alignment of the inner, my, inner world, your inner world to the outer world. That is what is that tracking is what is. So objectively you've kept the food log, right? Now you've kept the food log. Now you objectively see. This is what your patterns have been. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're not in good health, they're not good patterns, but that's okay. It's okay. You can't change something if you don't see it. And now discover your stress responder. Do the wellness survey. Get the proper lab work done. Discover how your body works. Is the wellness network in dysfunction, which means... Is there something off? Are the hormones off? Is the thyroid off? Are the adrenals off? Is the pancreas off? Is the li- what's off? Because it's easy to fix the body, people, if you know what's off. Mm-hmm. Right? Clean out. Begin by cleaning out the pantry. Find your proper diet and reset and, and put a plan together. Begin changing your routine. Create your plan, the steps, and a time frame. That's all you have to do. You know? And it begins first where you're at without judgment because you're working on your sleep. You're working on your water. You're beginning to work on your mind. Okay. Take your time. Let's figure out what the right diet is for you. 
because if you don't, you can have you can have the perfect diet. If the other elements aren't in place, it doesn't matter. You're gonna you're gonna quit anyways. Yeah, and I hate, and I'm not being negative. I'm telling you fact, you'll quit. Mm-hmm. So, and then the fifth element is exercise. Growing your health is dependent on a single factor: muscle. The key biomarker, right? We begin losing muscle in our early 30s. And if our lifestyle is built in anxiety, the process begins much earlier. (coughs) Excuse me. So exercise is the absolute key factor in growing our health. So the question is, why is it number five element and not number one? Simply put, because exercise is stressing the body. And if you don't have the other four elements dialed in, you could actually increase the stress. Right? You're, this is because you're going out, you're going for a run, and you, or you're, you're going to go pump some iron, you're going to take a, a, a Zumba class, and nothing else is dialed in, you're making yourself worse. So, should you wait on beginning exercise? And my answer is absolutely not. Allow me to elaborate. And then I'll let David take it. There's a lot of research on exercise and longevity now. The studies show, in fact, these studies are conclusive that 150 minutes of physical activity a week is the minimum number to grow health. This is 150 minutes of moderate intensity with two days of strength activity. So, sounds like a lot, right? Well, I've been exercising on a regular basis for 42 years. My regular regimen, not my bodybuilding regimen, was set <laughs> when I turned 45 years old. You saw it for years, David, decades before I did a contest again, right? Weight training, five days a week, one to one and a half hour sessions. Monitored cardio, seven days a week, one hour. That is 870 minutes, 14.5 hours a week. This leaves me 152.5 hours minus sleep seven hours. It leaves me with 104 hours to play my roles. Let's say 50 of those hours are work. It leaves me 54.5 hours left. People, time is the, I almost swore. (laughs) Time is the worst excuse you could ever give about exercise. 150 minutes is nothing when objectively broken down. Exercise benefits brain health. It reduces anxiety. Exercise repairs and and builds muscle. And this decreases fat, increases oxygen, lowers blood pressure, lowers sugar, raises good cholesterol, increases bone density. So exercise, subjective, take an honest look. How much time during the day do you really sit? You think you don't have time. And when do you move? When is your movement? Really, just look at yourself again. And objectively, begin by getting steps. And just like you did with logging the diet, begin measuring the steps that you have now. First, just measure your current steps and then create a plan to increase them. And then when you're ready and you have other elements working, then get an expert and create a true plan. See, I'm going to close it and leave it to you now on the exercise. But this is my, what I think. Growing your health is a choice that you must make. It's not something that happens accidentally. It's a choice and it's not one thing. It's bringing the elements. It's understanding the function and operation of the human being and bringing those five elements together. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts, David? Yeah, I think now there's, there's, there's no excuse anymore. You know, the, the resources that are there on social media apps that you use for your entertainment are can be used the same thing for education and information. TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, all of these things, you can find exercises. And I, and I find that people are, are stuck too much in, in fear and they're afraid to ask questions because they want to act like they know it. In reality, if you're just starting, you don't know it. I say I don't know it. <laughs> you know, I, I constantly, I'm still looking up videos and exercises yeah. and diets and you name it, I watch it. Take advantage of when you sign up for a gym and they give you that first free, you know, training session. Sure. Ask the questions. If you got to ask the questions instead of training and when they do the body scans, do the body scans, there's always free promotions and things like that to use. You just have to be able to take advantage of it or be willing to take advantage of it because it's, it's literally in your pocket every day. 
you know, when I make breakfast, when I make lunch, when I make something, I got something playing that's, okay, I'm going to try this today at the gym. Oh, no, you know, this guy says to put this in front of this. It's about just adjusting and figuring out. And there's some days, you know, that some workouts where I don't adjust. I found out what works for me. Sure. I'm sticking to it. But the ones that I feel like I need to improve on, I'm not going to just figure it out on my own. I'm going to use my resources to develop a plan and then go on. How'd you like the way I did the breakdown, man? That gives me 50 hours a week after I worked out, after I worked, after, you know, I yeah. mean, think about it. And I'm a busy guy. Mm-hmm. And that's the truth. Yeah, I'll do it. That's the absolute truth. People realize if you guys learn how to really slow down and start to put your life. And I get up at 2.30 in the day in the morning because... That's the time that everybody should get up if they want a good exercise program. That's right. You know, I think right <laughs> after 5 o'clock is probably more often. That's it for today's show. <laughs> Our mission here is the greatest shift to the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, subscribe. Links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time, stay inspired.